10 Reasons Psychics Aren't Real With a great many psychics, there are the claims made about their abilities, and yet they do not deliver. If there was a consistency of their ability, that they could offer clear details, that they could offer more than science-y reasoning, but genuine science, genuine reason, information that could be clearly observed, tested properly, then you could say there's the possibility that psychics could be shown to be real. However, in the vast majority of cases, cases that are usually tested, they do not provide sufficient information. If there was more to it, that is to say, if the psychic abilities genuinely worked, then surely they'd be able to offer clear information in regard to the future, whether they call it predictions, a foresight reading, or even prophecy. 10. Telling the future. When it comes down to predictions, a great many psychics make a great many claims. They will claim things about the future, but typically shroud them in general terms. As a result, the information they bring forward typically does not really hit the nail on the head. There's also the technique of making a great many predictions, many of which will not come true, but those that do will be repeated and repeated again, and used as a way of a psychic to prop up their career. 9. Reading Auras The concept of the meaning of different aspects of the aura are typically nebulous ideas, which can be made to fit practically anything. A kind of aspect that relates to cold reading, that certain colours means certain things. Some people suggest there are shapes and patterns and symbols, as well as perhaps spirits and other entities you might see within the human aura. However, the information given is typically of a very low caliber. And if there was, well, more than practically nothing to it, more than the belief, surely the psychics would be able to give clear information, such as medical information. There are claims that they do, but these are not under test conditions. 8. Past Life Readings Surely, if past lives are consistent, genuine, set within time and space, to some degree at least, there would be a level of consistency. So when a person gives you a reading, and they're a psychic, or perhaps a person claiming some other relating sensitivity, then surely they'd be able to offer actual evidence that you were indeed a particular person within ascertainable history. Or at least, when you get multiple readings, there wouldn't be confusion, an overlap, or outright contradiction between the claims made. Indeed, there are many claims made about past lives and how they operate. And of course, there are a few stories out there of people having extraordinary information. But without proper test conditions, we can't really be sure. We can't say that these things are true if we don't have the evidence. Surely if a person has a genuine ability, it wouldn't be that difficult to winkle out information that would be evidential. They do a reading on a person, and they bring forward information that can be substantiated. If it's information that goes to an ancient culture, it would be incredibly hard. However, many people claiming a person had a past life more recently should be able to offer information that's clearer within the modern era, or at least the last couple of centuries. However, despite the stories, this is not provided. 7. Sciency Reasoning There's a lot of scientific flim-flam thrown around. The use of scientific language, where people use scientific terminology poorly, out of context, to support a series of ideas which are not actually substantiated themselves. Trying to use science to support what may or may not be true is deceptive. If you have practically no concept of what the physicist might mean in the context of quantum mechanics, how can you use the arguments in regard to quantum mechanics to support something which happens as a paranormal phenomena in regard to your own work, your own ability. Surely using scientific sounding ideas in this context is not only bad reasoning, it actually proves nothing. However, if the science made sense, it would at least lean towards the possibility, if not the probability, of some kind of phenomena. 6. Cold Reading A great many psychics employ techniques 
both deceptive and seemingly convincing to the credulous. A great many people are drawn in to the possibility of a psychic ability, not by the actual skill of a psychic, but the information is so nebulous or so simple that one can make it fit in any number of ways. A cold reading is where a person very often throws out a lot of information and allows the client, the person they're doing the reading, or message for to actually make the information fit. If we had clear information, clear evidence that the medium, psychic, sensitive or channeler was not employing cold reading, it would at least be something which suggests there could be more to it than merely a series of practices that can be utilised by frauds or deceived believers. 5. Your personality reading there are many psychics who claim to have the skill to tell you things about your own life and your own personality. They might well tell you things which seem to be quite impressive, but their general characteristics. If there is anything to the ability to read one's personality, tell things about a person's lifestyle, the way they think, the way they feel, some of the things they've gone through, then surely it should be clear. Otherwise it could easily be simply cold reading. There are those who claim, such as spiritualists, that the psychic rather than the medium will operate in a way which is focusing on the personality. They will read a person by focusing on them, having physical contact or close proximity, and doing an auric reading where they read into a person's energy field. However, typically with personality readings, it's to do with the same sort of feedback you get with cold and warm readings. However, if the information was actually clear, it would go some way in supporting the possibility of genuine psychic ability. 4. Hot Reading The concept of hot reading, as opposed to cold reading, is that where a person would have, in the case of cold reading, no information, and the so-called term warm reading is where they're working off feedback where the person is giving them some limited information. Hot reading is where they have prior information upon the person. They're able to give a lot of information because they already have a lot of information. Some psychics hire people to sit in the audience rather than actually doing any kind of psychic work. Or they contact people to come to the show or they research a person before they come to the event. Sometimes when information is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. And famously, a few psychics have even used earpieces to get the information given to them directly. A person buys a ticket for a theatre event. They give their name, and of course, the theatre know their seat number. It doesn't take much to do some research online. And with specialist programmes, such as those used by private detectives, it's easy enough to do research on practically anyone. 3. Using the audience's credulity. The great problem with psychic readings, whether they're cold readings or not, is that they play upon the desires of the audience, whether it's a stage show or some kind of one-to-one -one reading. Very often the belief of the person getting the reading is that they need to find where it fits, whether it's names, dates, ages, or whatever the case may be. People make it fit. They go with their emotional feeling, their desire to make it work, even if the information is very general and doesn't really land very well. So in many ways, a great many psychics play upon this particular aspect. Rather than providing good information, they rely heavily on the audience participation. 2. Giving names One of the great errors with a great many psychics, as well as mediums and other sensitives, is that when they give names, they typically give very general names. Occasionally they give names that are rare, but in those cases they don't usually work. Typically names like John, Jean, George and other such fairly common names, especially for the older generation, are typically given out. With family names, the same rule of keeping it simple using common names is a typical practice. However, the garden variety psychic is not likely to give out too many names. More typically, they give out letters. They'll say, I'm getting a name starting with a J, and the client, the person receiving the reading, will give its meaning. 1. Giving clear details. Giving clear details would be something which is highly evidential, especially if it was under test conditions, where you could rule out hot reading. 
where there was no prior information, and yet a person was able to give clear information. Clear aspects of a personality of a deceased relative, their name, their age when they passed, and when they were born, the month they were born. If the information was actually there, actually being conveyed, it would make such a brilliant case for some kind of phenomena. If a person was talking about the future, and their predictions were complex and clear, and they happened to take place in the way in which they described, that too would be very clear evidence. If a person was doing a kind of medical reading, where they were effectively using their psychic skill to scan a person to work out medical complaints, and the information they gave was scientifically verifiable, that would also be extremely good evidence for some kind of ability. However, despite rare cases of these claims of clear evidence, clear information, psychics do not provide this kind of clear information in test conditions. If they did, if they could, this video would have a different title.